Hi, Emma. Hi, Eric. Hey, Mama. We had some great sessions here already. Uh, we are going to hopefully ask Eric to bring in Lacey Peterson. Can you do that for us, Eric? He says she's already here. Hi, Lacey. How are you doing? She's saying, hey, I'm okay. <laughs> are you with your, your the child you were pregnant with, uh, Connor? She says, I am. Oh, that's so good. Well, would you mind us asking some questions? I mean, get the truth out there. I mean, maybe you, that would be good for you. Well, she says, I'm good, but it would be good for my mom and dad. Okay. And my brother. Okay. I have a lot of questions, pretty much all from blog members. Uh, here's one. Um, who truly killed you? There, she goes on to, or he maybe, there was no real incriminating evidence to truly prove Scott did this to her. Yeah. No, she says Scott did it. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go one by one. and That may mean that this jumps all over the place, but sorry, people. Um, in addition to whether how and why her husband murdered her, I would be interested in whether she knew about her. Did you know about his affair with Amber Frey? F-R-E-Y or Fry, I don't know. She says no, but I knew about another affair he had previous. Okay. Um, but was it a sole contract, this whole thing? She's saying yes. So what, tell me about that. Why? She says, when it comes to this life as Lacey, I um, needed to experience what it would be like to be a victim um, and to um, learn how trying to control a situation, trying to manipulate your life into being something that it would never be, um, that, that only leads to negative energy, that only leads to um, the illusion of... Um, following your own path. I think what I need to explain is that I was kind of a control freak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I came from a family who was, um, who got divorced when I was really little. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of had two families um, that I grew up in and I really wanted to have that perfect family with the perfect home and the perfect husband and everything needed to be perfect. I really like to put that, the dots on the eyes. Everything needed to be a certain way. I had this illusion in my mind on how everything was supposed to look like, how it was supposed to go. Um, so I was always trying to control every situation that I encountered. Um, now, <clears throat> when it came to Scott, I was madly in love with him because he was so attractive and he was so charming and he had all the, you know, the qualities that I was looking for a man. But um, during our marriage, um, I did notice that he was also very controlling and he wanted to, you know, what he thought was important was important. Um, what I thought was not so important. He mm -hmm. would just blow it off or just ignore yeah. it. Um, so, um, what happened was I really wanted to have a child. I wanted to have that perfect picket fence life and um, I wanted to be the perfect mother and there wasn't going to be a divorce and all of that. And um, so I, in some way or form, um, I had to convince him to have a child. He wasn't too fond of it. Um, once I got pregnant, it did take me a while to get pregnant. Um, but once I did get pregnant, he did seem excited about it. He did seem happy about it. However, mm -hmm. I think he was just trying to kind of please me or he was just trying to kind of soothe me um, and going along with it. Um, and he fell in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. She seems kind of down about that. Her energy's dropping. Right yeah. Now. Really dropping. He fell in love with somebody else, not because he fell out of love with me, because I don't think that Scott really knows the true meaning of love. He doesn't experience emotions like mm -hmm. other people do. Um, 
for him, life is more of a power play. It's all about um, keeping himself happy. It's all about um, what matters to him. And <clears throat> when he found, it's, she says, in order for him to kind of um, find a way to get away from me and the baby, he would start a different relationship to kind of have a different angle to go to, you okay. know, to kind of have a have a a reason to leave or a reason to um, to start over in some way or form. Um, he didn't want anything to change. He just wanted to. And babies bring change and chaos. And for somebody who's a control freak, babies are difficult. They really are. Yes, and they were. Connor was gonna was going to completely change our lives, and he yeah. knew that want change he wanted to to keep having fun and keep being individual and you know and and being the in some way or form the kid that he's always been you know he didn't want the responsibilities he didn't want the change um and and that frightened him and um <clears throat> he's did he plan this he did he yeah tell, actually, me, tell me everything that led up to and including the murder Tell us the whole story. Well, I, I was getting really excited about the birth. I, I, we were getting closer. And the more I talked about the baby and how, you know, I was I was becoming very demanding on him. I wanted him to do this. I wanted him to do that. I wanted like him to read books. You know, like books. books about babies, getting the room ready, getting this done, getting that done, you know, you know, take responsibility sure. in some way or form. I was, you know, I would boss him around a little bit, I guess. Um, he didn't like that. He didn't like that. I was trying to control him and turn him into somebody that he was not. Um, so, um, after he met, um, his new girl, you know, he started, uh, already seeing him with her. Are you talking uh, about Amber or another one? Um, somebody called Frey. Yeah, that's it. Amber Frey. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and the thing is, he's, she says, you know, looking back at it now, I didn't know at the time he was seeing somebody else, but looking back at it now, she also had a child. Um, so um, the, the thing that I don't quite understand now, even after my passing, I'm still having a hard time getting into his mind his mind is so confusing um but um it was just the idea of getting away from the marriage getting away from the baby um that led him to to really come up with this idea how can i get rid of her <laughs> she's going you know it, it's it's so weird to talk about that when it's about me but um why didn't he just divorce you i don't understand jesus he didn't want to, um, it had to do with money. He didn't want to lose money. He didn't want to lose his lifestyle. Um, he didn't want to, you know, uh, when we, when you get divorced, you have to split everything. Everything has to be 50, 50. And the fact that he had already had, um, an affair would really damage him in, um, in a, a divorce. Um, so, um, he was just thinking of his own, uh, you know, keeping his, his stature up and keeping his financial stability up and things like that. And, you know, it was just easier for me if I just disappeared because then the baby would be gone as well and he wouldn't have to pay child support money and so on and so on. It was so, easier for me to disappear. So tell me about his plans all the way up to your murder. Well, he had already um, thought about it for a couple of months. I never I have to say I didn't. I knew there were issues, and I knew that he was acting different than he normally did. Uh, but I never thought he would go there. <laughs> I didn't see it coming, not at all. Um, what happened was... She's saying that she talked to her mom that evening and he's, it looks like it's getting dark outside. So it was pretty, okay. So it looks like it was in the middle of the night. 
um, what he's she's showing me is how he kind of um, she was already in bed sleeping and he went up to her with a pillow mm -hmm. um, and he um, basically sat on top of her um, with his <clears throat> you know with his knees on the bed on top of her um, her belly, kind of like half her belly, half her chest, mm -hmm. is what he's showing me. Um, his knees are like right next to her ribs. Mm -hmm. um, and she, he's placing the pillow on her face. And she's, she, um, it looks like she's trying to, she's trying to struggle, she's fighting. Looks like she's her legs are trying to kick. Mm. Um, and she's trying to fight him and he, um, it's like he's trying to kick her in the side to make her stop from mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. like kicking with his knees in her ribs. Okay. What he's showing. Um, and, um, yeah, until she stopped. And that um, was the night of the 22nd. Uh, 23rd, right? It wasn't the morning of the 24th. I don't know why somebody wants to know that. but um, She's showing me the 23rd. Okay. Uh, does any, did anybody else, does anybody else know what truly happened? Like Scott's family, the lawyer, any, anybody? Um, no, nobody really knows that he had these plans. Nobody knows that he really did it. However, his mom and dad, they know kind of in their hearts that he did, but they don't want to see it. They don't want to see their son as being a murderer. So they're really completely in denial of this. Yeah, of course. So then what happened? She died. What, what so happened after that? Dead is what she's showing me. Um, and then he just went down and he had something to drink. It's just showing me how he's very cold about it. He just leave her there for a bit. Um, she says, I, I didn't go to the light right away. I didn't go home right away um, because I was standing right next to my body um, as he's crawling off it. Um, and I have my... Uh, my baby in my arms already mm. um, because he was pushing on the belly. He was sitting on it. Yeah. So um, he's, he's making me feel like yeah. Connor died pretty instantly as well. Um, and so she just kind of followed him around. She was, she's saying I wasn't, it was really weird because you would think that you would be, upset that you would be mad um that you know all these negative emotions would pop up but really what i felt was disbelief that this really happened mm -hmm. i was just kind of curious about what was what was he going to do next i really just kind of stuck around to see what he would be doing um so um he's she says for a couple of hours, he really just kind of sat there in the kitchen, just kind of drinking, eating something. Um, eventually, he came back up, she says, and he uh, wrapped me into something. Like a sheet or something? <clears throat> yeah, it kind of looks like, um, you know how you have um, the kind of the fabric they call it, I don't know, they, here they call it like sailing fabric. It's kind of like water. Like a canvas? Okay. Yeah. Like, like a like canvas that. tarp or something. Yeah, and, and just like he's, she, he's trying to get her in there, but it wasn't easy. Um, she says I was pretty heavy. <laughs> well, I've been pregnant, of course. Yeah, she's, she's, she's laughing because she says, you know, I'm dead now and I'm still thinking about my weight. Uh, that's why she's laughing. She's like, you know, I still get that feeling of I was too fat. <laughs> but what does Scott do with your body? Um, it looks like he transported it to um, 
in, in a car, it looks like. It looks like a car is transporting it to, um, uh, like, a harbor kind of thing. Okay. Um, he went really early in the morning, she said. He went really early in the morning. Because he didn't want freak, to... Merry freaking Christmas! Yeah, he went really early in the morning because he didn't want people to be there or see him. Um, he had a hard time, she says, because... Okay, so he had um, a boat that he had just bought, um, and he had made these... Um, before he killed me, he had made these anchors, is what um, she's showing me, kind of like cement blocks. Hmm. Um and so he had to pick all that up first. Yeah, just sh he's he just he wasn't really good at 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 the boat thing yet. She's making me feel like he was having problems <laughs> trying to get to where he wanted to get. Um, but um, he basically just um, stopped somewhere in the middle of water. Is what she's showing me. Just he was just looking around, making sure there was nobody there. And he had tied um, these cement block things, um, what looks like her arms and her legs. And he just he just knocked me over. He just put me in the water is what he did. And he sank to the bottom, obviously. Yeah. Um, will he ever be executed for the crime? Or will he win his appeal? Um, she says it's really unclear right now because he's having <clears throat> he's having so much support from people um, who believe in his innocence mm. um, that what they're Suckers. doing is they're feeding yeah they're feeding that reality so um, right now it's still very uncertain is okay. is he supposed to um, die that way yes it's it's supposed to happen that way. Um, it's supposed to happen according to his contract. However, those contracts can always be changed. Yeah. yeah. If he really believes that he will be freed, and so he so he will be. So, um, and if it gets fed with it, that kind of energy, then then you know, the likelihood of that happening is very very large. All right. So, what happened when you crossed over? Well, I didn't really cross over until after the trial. Okay. I stayed around with my family, my mom and my dad, um, and my brother had a really, really hard time. Um, they were crushed, and they still are, so I still have contact with them on a daily basis. Um, I just, you know, I love my parents, and my, I just love my family. I love my family very much. Um, so I stayed with them. They needed the support. Um, I wasn't alone. I got help from... Um, one of my guides who came down and assisted me, he was actually um, going to escort me home. And I said, no, my family needs me at this moment. So he said he would stay uh, and help me to help them feel um, supported and feel loved from this side. So okay. um, I did stick around until after uh, the trial. And then um, we... <laughs> It was really pretty for, for me and Connor because um, my guide um, said, okay, time to go home. And he basically, we started walking. Um, and the weird thing is that, you know, a lot of people will talk about death. They go through a tunnel or they go through this or that or go towards the light. It didn't really happen that way. It was almost like instantly, as soon as I made that choice, okay, now it's time to go home and, you know, make peace with this, um, to get some healing myself. I had now tried to heal my family. I needed healing myself as well. Um, it's like the surrounding around me just changed. Hmm. I really walked towards the light, but I, I felt the, the movement of walking, although I wasn't really walking. I didn't have any more legs, but I felt the movement that I was walking. But as I was doing that, I wasn't really walking towards something. It's almost like stepping out of one reality and going into another well, one. That's what happened, yeah. It just changed. You know, the, the, my environment completely changed. Um, and that's when I uh, met the rest of my team who had been guiding me.
Now, I, I just want to make something clear. A lot of people will ask me, why would you choose to be, uh, you know, to be killed in this life? Well, one of my past lives, I was the killer and I wanted to experience the other side of it. So um, it was the 1920s and um, I really had... Um, She's talking about being a schizophrenic, and she loved her family very much. She had a little sister, and she was a man, of, um, male. Um, she had a little, uh, little sister and mom and dad that she loved very much. But the older she got, um, the more confusing the, wor the voices became in her mind. Um, and it's almost like she would lose her own reality. Like she didn't know what was real anymore and what wasn't. Um, and so she had um, murdered her whole family. She oh. basically um, killed them all, including her little sister. Um, and um, Was Scott there? Was Scott in any of these lives? Scott was. Scott was my little sister at that oh, time. Oh, my God. I knew it. Oh, my God. I'm going to go. we got so many questions that you don't have to answer them in such detail. Sorry, people, but, you know. Is she? Are you at peace now, Lacey? I am. I'm at peace. Have you reincarnated? No, not at this moment. Okay. I'm um, taking a picture. <laughs> here's another one. Did you see any red flags from Scott? that he might kill you or was it complete was it a complete surprise I did feel him getting more angry faster and being um, you know a little bit on edge but right. I would never never thought he would go over to killing a person all right yeah talk to, to us about what happened after he anchored anchored your body what happened to your body She's going, do I have to go into that? Because that's not a pretty sight. Um, well, if you don't want to, I'm not going to force you to. Of course not. Well, she says that people want to know. Well, um, she's making me feel like um, there was a lot of, there's a lot of trash uh, floating around. And mm. she's making me feel like it would hit the body. Um, nice. Also, a boat hit a uh, part of the body. Um, she's making me feel like um, the head was chopped off by a blade. Okay. Mm. By a rotor. Okay. Um, and she's saying, you know, the rest was really just, um, you know, when a body is in, in, in the water for that long. She says, how can I explain this? Well, okay, it just decomposes, so, right? I mean, It decomposes, but the thing is, he had my arms and my legs tied to those cement blocks, remember? Mm. Yeah happens is the body will float up a bit so the arms will be down and the and the legs will be down but the body will float up and so there's a current that goes underneath the body that's constantly moving that body and when it starts moving you know the de uh, decomposition of the, of the you know it just kind of goes faster it like rips the arms off eventually after it starts to decompose it just rips off right. the legs and it rips it off and um, and eventually, um, Connor left my body as well. Oh yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was, you know, it just debris hitting it, um, yeah, sure. boat, boats who passed by, um, whether, well, well, they, well they fish. Ever, yeah, sure. Fishy. Yeah, well, well, um, uh, the head, their legs and arms ever be found. Maybe they have, I don't know. I don't really follow the story that much. The head wheel, not the arms. Okay. Um, has the baby reincarnated? And what was his, did he have a spiritual contract behind all this? Um, yes, the baby um, has been reincarnated. Um, it is not in the same family, though. Um, okay. But Connor's, Connor's spirit is still with me, so we're still together. Okay. Um, when it comes to his purpose, <laughs> It's really, Connor just, um, his only purpose was to give me the sense of happiness and joy of being pregnant, of oh. being 
of having the, the the pregnancy, you know, the fulfillment, the unconditional love that I felt for this uh, little little baby inside my belly, how he moved, you know, he would move a lot. Connor was a very active baby, and um, Scott didn't like it. You know, I would say, come feel my body, he's moving, and he'd be like, no, I don't want to. Yeah. So he was already taking distance from it. So uh, so basically, it, the only sole purpose was was to kind of assist me um, in, in, in finding happiness in, in, uh, in having a baby. Okay. How far offshore are your remains, or at least where you were anchored? Uh, she's making me feel like it wasn't that far. She's um, she's talking about like ten kilometers away from where she was found. Okay. Um. So he didn't go fishing like he claimed. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> um. Didn't go golfing either because that was his first plan. Okay. So there's really nobody else involved in your murder and disappearance, then, huh? Just Scott. Yeah. Just. Just. One person who, um, he, he, you know, he doesn't, he really doesn't have uh, emotions. He's completely neutral when it comes to um, love. And um, his parents know that, but they've always been in this kind of denial. Um, Sounds like a sociopath. Is he a sociopath or psychopath or borderline personality on some mental illness? No, she's saying sociopath. Okay. Ugh. Has he killed before? No. Does he plan on killing like Amber Frey? He was planning on getting rid of, of uh, yeah. But uh, will he? Or maybe he did. I don't know. I don't even know if she's alive or not. Oh, she's alive. Um, he wanted to get rid of somebody who could um, prove that he was a liar and that he was... Um, you know, somebody not to be trusted. So he did have plans to visit her. Um, however, he was caught in time, so he, he can proceed with those plans. Well, so did, she didn't know that that he had plans to kill Lacey, right? No, she didn't know Lacey existed. Oh, really? To her, um, he had told her that, um, that he was a widower. Yeah, so she had no idea. Hmm. She really isn't. She has yeah. She she was just as much as a victim as I was. Um, did he have contract, Scott? He did. His contract is really about um, she's saying taking responsibility. Um. It's almost like um, he has to come to the insight that we're not here to live life on uh, an ego-based path, that we're here to... Um, uh, I'm not sure what she's saying. We are here to... Right. It's almost like we are here to create relationships um, and that every relationship comes with a responsibility to honor and love that person, um, even if you are not happy in the relationship. It's almost like he needs to find that, uh, that understanding and that knowledge that there comes respect with relationships and that taking a person's life doesn't exactly honor the relationship. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure. She's just kind of going all over the place. But, yeah, it, it has to do with getting an insight on um, what he did. Because um, even to this point, she says, he's still in denial. Uh, it's almost like he wants to not um, – he knows he did it. But right. Oh, yeah. Think responsibility for it he's still blaming me I was you know I I, I made him do this so he, he needs to find that responsibility and he needs oh. to find um, 
kind of like a peace with that, with the fact that he did this and that it was not necessary and he killed his own son. And mm. so it's all about, and that's, that's the whole thing why he is locked up for so long. He, he's, you know, it, it's, it makes you think when that's all you got to do. It's about thinking and it's about realizing things. Okay. Um, yeah. Lizzie, how do you feel about the fact that he's convicted and on death row? I didn't know he was, but I guess he is. Well, from a human point of view, <laughs> if I would go back into that kind of emotional state, then I would say, ha, huh, you deserve it. Um, when I look at it from a more spiritual perspective, um, then let's just say that I don't, we don't see death penalty as a punishment. Um, if you really need to learn a lesson, um, the longer your life, the more time you have to learn it. True. So that's how we see it. True. True. And maybe you see that he and you had a spiritual contract. So, yeah. Um, so did did Scott say anything to you when he was murdering you, or was he quiet? No, he was quiet. Okay. God, I can't imagine. Uh, some people say there were burglars across the street when all this happened. Uh, they didn't have anything to do with it, right? No. All right. Now, there's this one person, Sandra Bellinger in Berkeley, that uh, found this enormous string of EVPs from you, caught multiple EVPs that said, yes, yeah, Scott had done it, how he did it, where the body was located. Uh, and the EVPs turned to be true. Was that really you coming through on these EVPs? She's saying yes, but not all the information was translated correctly. Oh, okay. But yes, that was me. All right. So you had no idea about his affairs the one before amber and with amber no i knew about the one before amber i just oh, okay. didn't know about amber but that was really at the beginning of our relationship okay um mm -hmm. now what would you say to scott if you could talk to him again can i forgive him mm. Okay. And that he needs to start uh, his healing process. Okay. Um, do you have any messages for your parents? Yes. She says that I love him very much and that I'm with him at all times. And no matter how hard this might sound, but they are great lessons that they've learned from this. Lessons and acceptance and unconditional love. <clears throat> and they had to, they chose to undergo grief and to learn to overcome it. Yeah. So they did, they did good. They did good, she says. Well, what about any messages for your in-law, Scott's parents? She says, living in denial will only create more hurt and harm to the body and the mind. <clears throat> so coming at peace with the idea that your son made a decision, not you. This is not on you. This is not on, this is not your responsibility, that every person creates their own reality and that we should not feel responsible for what other people do, um, no matter if it is your son or not. This was his choice. This was part of his contract. And this is part of your contract to learn to um, <clears throat> find truth and peace in what happened. What, what did it, did it, was there anything that were, was taught to the masses with all this, your murder? Well, there wasn't really a contract in teaching others much of this, just mostly family related. However, <coughs> I think that it might be a great lesson in understanding that anybody could be a killer, no matter what they look like, no matter what their background is, you know. And how charmed their life is. Yes, how beautiful and blessed it is 
for some people, that blessing is a nightmare and it can drive them to do crazy things. Okay, so you knew Scott cheated before. Why did you stay with him after that first affair of his? Because in my eyes, he was the perfect man. He had the good looks. He had the job. He had the money. He had the charm. Everybody loved him. You know, he was very social. and yeah. Ted Bundy-like. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you forgave him for that and had faith in him to uh, turn a new leaf and be Let's faithful. Say to him. He was a very smooth talker. Hmm. Do you think he's remorseful at all? I think he is, but not towards me. He's not remorseful of getting rid of me. Mm. He's uh, he is remorseful that he killed his own son. Oh God, well, he should be. That's terrible. Um, all right, so now to some general questions. Uh, when you look back on your life, do you have any regrets? She says yes. My only regret is that I put so much pressure on myself. Yeah. Well, you know, you had, had a difficult. Perfect. Yeah, you, have, you you had a difficult, chaotic childhood, and you wanted to make a, a life for yourself and your children and your husband that was almost too perfect. Yeah, but all that pressure that I put upon myself, um, I really forgot to have fun in life. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you're having fun now. So, in, in, in a nutshell, what was your spiritual mission as Lady uh, Lacey Peterson? Basically, it was just to um, learn about the illusion of, of uh, power, of being in control, and it was about uh, undergoing, um, it's like undergoing the lesson of being a victim. Okay. Now, being I, in control of your own life. So I asked if the murder had anything to teach the masses. Were you here to teach anything? Not your murder, but you in general, were you here to teach something to anybody well I think mostly towards my family um, I would always smile I would always you know keep everyone happy I would always try to make people laugh so in some way or form I was the one who um, <clears throat> kept up appearances and everything was great and everything was perfect so um, I taught them that we can't control our destiny, not always, um, and that we really should really should enjoy every day more instead of keeping up the you know the, the mask that we are enjoying it, but really we're not. Yeah. Uh, so it's really a lesson for my family in mindfulness and, and living in the moment and, and understanding that a loved one can be can leave us at any moment in time and that it is um, essential that we um, experience and enjoy every moment that we spend with one another. Oh, how well I know that lesson. Do you have any regrets? Just that I didn't, didn't really enjoy the life that I, that I chose. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Is there another life you want to share beside the one you shared in the 1920s that seem to have influenced your life as Lacey? Well, I had another tough one that was really, you know, I, I, want, I want to let people know that although certain lives really seem very tragic and, you know, it, it does hurt a lot of people and things like that, but those lives we usually learn the most from oh, yeah. uh, because they're so intense because there's so much energy and emotion uh, dealt with it. So uh, one of the lives that I learned a lot from was um, showing me the Middle Ages, how she was a priest. Mm -hmm. um, and um, his job was to go after the women that they, uh, they kind of revolted, that didn't like, uh, you know, to be told what to do, that kind of wanted to do their own thing, to stand up for themselves. And basically, he would have to go after them um, and um, basically, you know, call them witches and, and sentence them to death. So oh, God. Um, 
a really horrible uh, life, but a very interesting life because I actually enjoyed doing that. And um, it's really hard <laughs> looking back at it from a spiritual perspective. It's really um, strange that you can find enjoyment in hurting people. Um, but I did. And, um, you know, it, it was just one of those lives where I learned that um, let's just say that my, she's talking about how she was in control of people's lives, how she controlled it, how people would, um, it's, it's all about having the power. Yeah. So you having control their fate. You controlled whether they would, their live, faith, yeah. they would come to me with their problems and I would tell them, do this, do that. You know, I, I had everybody in the palm of my hand and I can make them do and give me anything that I wanted. It was really about feeling that power, feeling um, superior above uh, everybody else because I did believe that I, I was sent down here by God to get rid of all the nasty people. Um, so I really felt larger than life. However, at the end of my life, um, he showed me how he got, um, <clears throat> it looks like um, he got a really nasty disease very painful, long, prolonged death. Like mm. he died very slowly, very painful. He showed me blisters mm. all over the body, all over the face. Well, what, um, what it, was it? Stephen Johnson syndrome, pemphigus vulgaris, syphilis, uh, the pox, I don't know. Yeah, the pox, I think. Okay. Yeah, was, was he a homosexual me. and, and, and hated, that hated women? I'm not saying that homosexuals hate women, people, but or was he a sociopath <laughs> like Scott? No, not a sociopath. Um, <laughs> you know, homosexual, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, no, it was all about it was all about the control. It was all about you know, yeah. it's like being a dictator. You know, you you just have power over everybody, including their their life. Um, only you justified it. You know, it's yeah, about you probably justified you know. that you were making the world a better place by exactly. by uh, you got getting rid of, of the uppity women. Yeah, so. you got the support of people. Um, that was the whole crazy thing about it. You know, people would cheer you on for for picking these women out. You know. Um, but yeah, that was my, I don't want to call it punishment, but that was the outcome of, of, um, the ego power lusted, uh, energy that I had been sending out for so long is it basically yeah. got back to me and, um, it, it turned me into, um, it's almost like I was supposed to feel all the pain that I had caused others oh. over long time before my death before um you know i went home so it was an interesting life let's just say it that and, way and, uh, look here you you're, you were sentenced to death as lacey peterson for having your own mind all right just a couple more questions um first is there anything you want to share with us that people don't know about well there wasn't really that much special thing about me I was just you know I just wanted to make the best of things and I wanted to, yeah I just I was just an ordinary girl well is there anything you'd like to share period to anybody or to the collective anything else you want to get off your chest so to speak She says, yes, if you are in a relationship where you're starting to feel negativity or you're starting to feel that the person you're living with is changing, look into it. Don't ignore it like I did. Just look into it, um, connect, communicate with that person and see what comes up. And if they're not willing to open up, um, then you might need to um, 
either let people know that, hey, he's changing. I don't know why. Um, but I never told anybody how Scott was. I never told anybody because I wanted to keep up the nice picture. Yeah, perfect marriage. Yeah. Of the perfect marriage. So um, don't be afraid to share it with people so they can check up on you, so they can, you know, you get some support. If or something leave. Goes- Jesus. Or leave if you can. Yeah, if it gets real violent, you would leave. But like I said, he Scott was never violent to me. It just happened that, you know, he did change. He was more, uh, you know, more verbally aggressive. He would leave. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. He would get upset faster. But he wouldn't uh, beat you. He, no, he never just beat me. Violent at ne- the end, though. A little bit violent at the end. All right, Eric, yeah. do you have anything you want to share or you want to ask? And then Emma, do you too? Um, Eric is just asking if Connor was in any of her other lives. Because he's saying, I'm hoping that you will. Uh, I guess he wants her to have a life with Connor as her baby, a yeah. full life. Yeah. Um, and she's saying she will. Uh, if, if you look at it from your timeline in the future, she has a life where Connor is her daughter. Hmm. Uh, and they really are the bestest of friends. So they're really BFFs all the way. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, so they do have a really good life together. Um, where also uh, some of the family members um, that she has now will be in that life as well. Will Scott be in it? Um, he's not in that one, she says. Okay. When, when is that? How far in the future? She says, I want people to understand that um, I have had lives with Scott that were okay, that, oh, yeah. were, that were good. So um, I know a lot of people are like, you know, he killed what? you. But, uh, well, yeah. when, is this, when is this future life? Um, she's saying it's, it's 2075 is what I'm getting, 2075. Okay. Emma, do you have anything for Lacey? Well, um, no, I just want to thank her for sharing her story. Um, thank you so much, Lacey. Yeah, I didn't know about Lacey. I guess it was a big deal in America, but here in Europe, I have never heard of her murder. So um, I just, uh, I'm just glad she found peace, and I'm glad that she was willing to share her story with us and that Connor is with her. Um, and, you know, it's so hard sometimes for us humans to – send healing and love and light to people who hurt others. But I think, and I think Eric will back me up on that, is that um, when people do this to other people, they are really, they need help. They're sick or they're um, completely um, away from source. They're completely removed from source. And and the only thing we can do is we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't approve of it. We don't have to, feel good about it. We're here to be mad and to say that's not what you do. Yeah. Um, and those people do need to be guided or put into, um, you know, a, a jail, I guess. Um, but they also need to be, <laughs> Eric's going, you're going to ruffle some feathers. Um, they also need to be, we need to accept them. Right. That this this is part of their journey and this is part of their lesson and they're going to learn what they need to learn from this. Um, so we don't have to agree with it, but in some way or form, we need to learn to accept everyone. Well, does that mean that we should, sense. we should love him, send him love? Yeah. We can always send him love and, 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 and guidance, you know, so it, can, you know, it was a spiritual contract, you know, Exactly, uh, and I know that, that that's, that's such a hard concept. Isn't oh, it? For, yes. It is. it is so hard to mm. say, hey, let's send those, uh, you know, those people who blow themselves up, let's send them some love and light. But if we think about it from a different perspective, if we go completely objective to it, you know, why are they doing that? There's, yeah. you know, there, there's always a reason why. Why do yeah. people do such horrible things? You know, it's because um, they have the wrong idea in their mind or they're feeling, you know, taken advantage of or, or society is not helping them with the problems that they have. You know, yeah. so many people have have mental, mental issues, yeah, but they're not getting the guidance that they need, yeah. you know. And we're um, collective. We're, yeah. we're all a part of each other. 
So we need to help the entire collective, even if it means helping yeah. every individual. So Emma. And that's all hard, but, you know, that's what I try to do. I try, you know, I try to find acceptance, yeah. even the people who hurt others or hurt children or, you know, that really makes me cry. You, you know, you touch an animal or a child and, you know, they can't defend themselves. It really makes me cry. But at the same time, I just go, it might be part of their contract. I don't know. I know. You know. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, Emma. Thank you, Eric. And thank you so much, Lacey. I'm so grateful to you and your courage to come up here and, and share so much intimate information with us. She's saying you're welcome. Thank you for um, allowing me to speak. Okay. And Emma, you guys need to check her site out, www.emmanuelmackintosh.com, which I will put here. And um, anything else, Emma, before we close? Well, I would say check out the Channeling Eric website, Channeling Eric with a K uh, dot com, because there's so many interviews there. I see a lot of people are asking about what about this guy and that guy. A lot of those people have been interviewed. So check out the website. Yeah, go, go to, to the, archives. Yeah, right. And fill in the name that you want to see, uh, you know, interviewed. And, and it might just pop up. So yeah. check it out. And subscribe to the channel. Also, check out Eric's book, My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven. If you want to know everything that happens from the moment you die on, what your life as a spirit is going to be like, what your environment's going to like, it's a page journey. You need to check it out. It's, like, it's like only nine bucks or something. Anyway, thank you, guys. Thank you. I love you, Eric. I love you, Emma. I love you, too, Mama. He says, I love everybody. So keep that love in your heart, people. We need it. And I'm glad your babies are okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Preparate.